psalm that we sang this morning, which has always done so well here at St. Martin's Forest Catholic Church. We are blessed to have an outstanding music ministry. Amen. I'm not sure how many churches have the quality, the confidence that we have in music ministry. It's important. But the song we sang today was, I will praise your name forever, yes. my King and my God. When I heard that this morning, I couldn't help but think that when we come to God's house, when we come in God's presence, we should give God praise for what God has done for us. Yes. 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 God is worthy to be praised. I'm not sure about you, but I've come this morning to, to give God praise and yes. thanks for what God has done. Yes. To Sunday, God's day. God's day. Whether you're watching on live stream or in the sanctuary, we should be giving God some praise yes. for what God has done for us. Yes. 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 So I invite you to pray with me today. The word that I have prepared might be giving away God's desire. No preacher should dare enter the God's pulpit without asking for a blessing and permission. Preach God's word. So loving God, I ask you once again to anoint this assembly today. Give us the gift of good listening, good speaking. That your word proclaimed might be preached as you desire. We ask all of our prayers and blessings and praise to Christ our Lord. We gather on this first Sunday in July. And it's, a, it's hard to imagine, but this year is, is over half over. And God knows 2020 stands out as a unique year. <laughs> they tell me that 1968 was a very troubled time in our country. I, I was born in the United so I can't really tell about it. Some of you might remember the, the, the happenings of 1968, where people trying to speak the truth of peace and justice were cut down, uprising, all kinds of turmoil in our country, in our world, in our church. But 2020 stands out. It's not even over yet. But 2020 will mark the history books in a unique way. You know what I'm talking about. Allow me this morning to preach around the theme of 2020. 2020. You see, 2020 from an eye doctor, ophthalmologist perspective means perfect vision. Huh? You got 2020 vision. I don't. I need help. You can see things perfectly. It's amazing in 2020. We find ourselves blinded, broken, and burdened. Blinded, broken, and burdened. Anybody know what I'm talking about so far? Yes. The reality is that coronavirus, we thought, was a passing old flu, huh? Somebody says it'll go like this. Born real fast, just like this, he said. This foreign virus, this Chinese virus, he said, to once again divide our nation, our people. Oh, it came here with fury, didn't it? And some folks still don't seriously. Come on. Think they're immune from it. Hope it plays no favorites comes to all kinds of spaces, doesn't it? And it still is a silent killer. Yeah. And what it was certainly took so many people's lives. And those who were able to pass the storm to give praise to their God. Let's try that again. Those who pass the storm to give praise yeah. to their yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. But what also it did was, as I said before, it took off the band-aid huh? of inequity in our nation. 
one of the articles today, actually a terrible article, the Philadelphia Inquirer, that talked about black barbershops, men who are trying to simply get by with an honest living, and the struggle they have just to make it, make it through. Not like the fat cat corporations and institutions that got paid. We know what it did. Pull back the reality. Do we know we're in the struggle of health care? We know in the struggle of trying to provide a decent wage for your children? We know what it's like to try to get by in education? You know what I'm talking about today, how to pull back the haves and the have-nots. Those who had a device from the very beginning, who were online day one, who had the best internet service, and had moms and dads to help them, young children with no fault of their own, just because of zip code. We know we'll write stories and dissertations about what 2020 has done to urban young people in education. is also the year. Once again, we are awakened to the reality of racism. For those of us who know it's still an issue, it was, it is still an issue. But some folks just woke up and realized we got a problem with race in our country. The hideous, evil murder. George Floyd. Wasn't the first time, won't be the last, but it was something about that posture of somebody having a knee on someone's neck. And thank God it was covered. Whoever got that video footage, it will last forever. Because yeah. it showed the posture of white supremacy still rolls around our nation. Big time and little time. The reality of institutional racism and the personal struggle we all have to we breathe in this air is still with us. Father, why are you talking about racism here? Because we still are crippled by internalized racism, many of us. Yeah, come on, come on. We don't think we deserve the same thing as somebody else. We come along and think we have to somehow change up to adjust. In our church, oh, oh, Catholics can't be racist, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? It's hard to kind of see it sometimes. It's mass so beautiful. But the reality is, it's an institution that's here like a church where racism is alive and well. 2020 stands out as a year a great challenge and great pain. But I didn't come up to this pulpit this morning to depress you. I didn't wake up this morning to give you some bad news. I didn't come by here as a black preacher from a, a row home in North Philadelphia to, to weigh you down. You see, I got some good news this come morning. On, and the good news is that even though it sounds strange, the prophet Zechariah, the first few words we hear in scripture today says, rejoice heartily. Yeah. Not just rejoice, but rejoice with your whole heart. When I read that preparing for the word today, I said, are you serious? I'm called to rejoice. I'm called to be happy. I'm called to give God praise and thanks in this space. What are you talking about? What do you mean rejoice? I don't have a job. What do you mean rejoice? I don't know when my kid will go to school. Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, online or not. What do you mean rejoice? But I have to continue to nasty throw through this world. When my blackness is seen problem and a threat, especially if I'm a black man. What 
should we rejoice? Why should I rejoice? When everything seems so broken in our world today, and this man continues to sit high and people are low. What you mean rejoice when people are uprising and we haven't even gotten to the election in November? You think it's bad now? What you mean rejoice when this nasty commercial, which does nothing more than sensationalize? Fear. You've seen it. Terrible commercial that makes fear a campaign issue in our country, the waiting time is five days. We call ourselves the United States of America? Are you serious? But see, the Christian rejoices in a way that's different Come on. Come on. from the rest of the world. You, you see, stay with me. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Some folks rejoice in things of this world. Money, power. Give me some liquor, I'll rejoice. Let's smoke, I'll rejoice. That's not how the Christian ought to rejoice. We rejoice in the Lord. You rejoice in the fact your God has not abandoned you. You rejoice. <laughs> you rejoice in the fact that Jesus walked with me and talked with me along the way. I'm not alone. Yeah. I'm not alone because I rejoice in the Lord who walked with me. You see, the Christian woman and man rejoice because she knows who woke her up this morning. She knows who's got her life in her hand. She knows who got this thing. Oh, the Christian rejoice. To know if I come <laughs> to Jesus, if I prioritize Jesus, if I give him some time, some prayers, it doesn't mean it's going to go away. <laughs> we think that, well, I rejoice, I praise, I'm still broke. I rejoice, I praise, I still got drama in my house. But a spirit of understanding means God walks with you. And if you are quiet enough and gentle and humble enough and open enough, God will lead you and guide you to a joy the world can't give you and the world can't take from you. It's a joy that, that the old folks talked about. Up above my head, <laughs> I hear music. Come on. Up above my head, I hear music. There must be a God somewhere. You yeah. see, up above my head, yeah. I hear music. For I know who holds my life in his hand, even though I don't know how it all want to figure out. But I know one thing. God has never abandoned me and never will. That's a joy that comes from understanding even in the mess. <laughs> There's a message. Let's try it again. Even in the mess of life. There's a message. You see, I can rejoice in the mess of COVID Because, you see, maybe in the mess of COVID-19, I have a deeper understanding of the needs of my mom and my granddad. Yeah. What it's like to drop somebody off at the hospital and you can't go in. Maybe it's got me a little bit closer because I can't go to the gym or the bar to my family, to maybe even the gift of FaceTime, Zoom, 
has brought us closer together. Maybe I can rejoice in the mess and realize there's a message that maybe COVID-19 has invited and challenged and sent parents into the arena of the schoolhouse. You see, sometimes we don't want parents in the schoolhouse. The first time you called me about Jamal, my son, he was cutting up. You've never invited me to a conversation about what Jamal does good. You've never invited me to a parent-teacher conference. And you have them on a time you know I can't show up. And sometimes our Catholic schools have disempowered our parents. We don't want them involved sometimes because we got the medicine for the child. Not realizing that the first and the best teachers ought to be your mama and your daddy. The first teachers. I've taught many boys how to tie a tie. But I wish the dads, or their uncle, or someone had done it, and maybe they would have, if I had not gotten away. COVID, there's a message in the mess. Yeah, yeah. You see, church, there's a message in the mess of seeing the reality of the ugliness of racism. It's amazing how everybody wants to have a conversation about race. Everybody wants to change the curriculum about race, the PDs about race. Maybe in the mess, the mess of this horrible scene, maybe white folks are beginning to get it. And maybe we are as well. Just because we had President Barack Obama and my first lady, not mean all is well in America. We got work to do. Come on, man. come on. We got work to do. And maybe, just maybe, there's a message in the mess that you, 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 not you yet, but all you better vote in November to yeah. change the dynamic of this country. Yeah. There's a message in the mess. Yeah. There's a message in the mess, church in 2020, maybe, just maybe, there's a message in the mess of seeing the reality of racism that we might have a conversation and some action for other marginalized people in our society. Can we talk seriously about what we did to people from West Africa and not talk about what happened to folks who were in this land when folks came over and took it from them? We can't. Indigenous folks who were here, we can't talk about our struggle and not see a connection to the struggle of women. What we have done and still do to oppress women to treat them like second-class citizens. I said it, I'll say it again, I'll say it to Ali. Equal pay, equal work. Yes. Women deserve the same thing as men. Yes. And yet, there's a message in the mess. In the midst of August 2020, we can still rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. And ask God to give us the eyes we need to see God's holy hand inviting us to do what Jesus says in the gospel today. It's a word of comfort, huh? And I'm not sure about you, but I need a word of comfort this morning. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and gentle of heart. You'll find rest for yourself, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. So when I, when I read that, I thought of a song. Come to Jesus. 
Come here. And sometimes we feel shackled, huh? But we come and get free in the spirit because he will lift you up and turn you around. I was what you done living in a world of sin. Had no hope, All right. no peace within. Yes. But somebody told me yes. what Jesus did. Said he gave his life, died for my sins. Now 